Hello everyone, this is JPO and I am back for another review. And today I'll be reviewing Volume 3 of Ruby. Okay, if you're brand new to this, then I have to explain this to you again. Um, what happens is I sit here with a camera in front of me and I just talk. There's no editing involved, no background music, no fancy clips, no nothing. It's just my personal thoughts and opinions. So, if you're expecting something professional in how I do things, do not. It's never stated that I'm a professional at things. So, let's start off with uh, Ruby Volume 3. I'm going to start off by saying that this is a fantastic volume of Ruby. Um, although, I do gotta say that there's just something about the third volume that just did not really feel like it was Ruby. For me, I felt like uh, Volume 3 was a lot more action-based. Uh, it focused more on the combat of the uh, vital, fest uh, vital, uh, vital Festival tournaments. Uh, something like that. I'm not sure what that's what it's actually called. Instead of the um, world-building uh, emotional speeches and talks that they had in Volume 2. Which those are really good, but they do have um, some of the in Volume Three, mainly the second half, and those I would say are probably the better ones. Like, uh, and I, I also feel like the, the third volume suffered a bit because Monty Oom um, suddenly passed away uh, before the production of Volume Three, and so the style. It stayed the same, but it, it, something about the animation, it, it, it just and the way it was directed, it felt differently, and uh, I can respect that. So, yeah. And another thing I'd say that suffers in Volume Three is the intro sequence. Although it is a fantastic intro, it does not fit at all for the first half of Volume Three. The first half of Volume Three, the song does it fit the setting at all. It fits the second half. And, which is why I did not like it. If you saw my reaction, my reaction videos, I complained about it. Because it just spoiled the second half of the season for me because I knew like, oh, this is going to be a season where the the main cast uh, um, they go through some terrible trials and things are not going to end up bad, uh, end up good at, in the end. And they literally said in this lyric, like, there's no hero in the end. And I just think, oh, ugh, you just spilled the entire thing for me. Which, it's kind of what I feel, but uh, besides that, the intro, it's a really good intro. Uh, let's see, another thing I love about Volume 3 is the introduction of more characters. They bring in a lot of new characters from other places around this world of remnants. The sad part is that they're mostly just featured in one episode and then they're seen again in the final few episodes but they have no real role in it. They're just there to look cool. And another thing I would love is the bringing of Crow. We, like, they're starting to introduce the families, such as Weiss's sister. Like, we now know what she looks like, and we now know what her father looks like. Uh, we, we got more on Penny. We have a basic idea of how he looks like. And if the guy who was, who's was who been complaining with me about how I did not notice him in the reaction video. Okay. Like, yeah, I've seen the show lots of times, but it does not mean I'm a, I'm a professional on it, okay? It takes me a while for me to finally just notice the details of designs. You don't really notice things at first glance. I, was, I wasn't really caring for the father at the moment, so I'm getting off track. Crow is a fantastic character. He's, the, I, he's my personal favorite character of the show. Uh, mainly because of, um, I really think he's a great mentor. Although I do love Ospin, uh, Crow I actually believe is much more uh, suitable to be helping children or kids or teenagers, which he does very well. And also he has a fantastic sense of humor. 
it, it, he he's basically like Yang, but a much more non-punny version of Yang, and I believe that is a great sense of character. Um, we also get more insight on our villains and what the plan is, and finally the build-up of the past three volumes has finally taken place at the end, and uh, I don't know, I could do spoilers at the end, but I, uh, I'm going to do spoilers. Um, so the finale, um, two terrible things happen, actually a lot of terrible things happen, but the two main ones is like a death of a very great character and the, let's just say that one of the main four characters, you know, they got disarmed, so. Yeah, I'm still spoiling this, uh, spoiling, yet not spoiling this, so, if you haven't seen it, watch it, come back here, you know what I mean, and, um, sadly, one of the villains that we know officially is dead, well, we don't really know officially, it's what we speculate to be dead, but what we've seen, but, he's, the, the sad part is that he's a fantastic villain, and the fact that they killed him off, that was sad. So I guess you guys know what I'm talking about. And, um, overall, a fantastic volume. More world building. The world of Remnant's uh, session of this were actually pretty good. We, brought, we got into more things and explained a lot of things that would be very helpful in the finale if you would watch them. So if you haven't watched The World of Remnant, it's advised that you watch it because Volume 4 will be coming out you know, uh, in a few months, or maybe a year or so. And if there's things you don't know, watch Water Remnant. So, overall, if I was to rate this, I would, I'm going to rate this a 10 out of 10. Fantastic volume. Although I do have to say that it needs more Zvi, uh, Dr. Upleg, and... Uh, more Ozpin action. Okay. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time.